Chemical shifts or the positions of the signals. What do they tell you? They tell you about the electronic environment. Okay. Electronic environment means what? Okay. Or in short, I can say you different types of protons attached to different electronic environment gives you a different positions of the signals. What does that mean? Every proton or this nuclei are surrounded by a set of electron or you can say electron cloud is there. Okay, so different kind of protons have different electronic environment and this electronic environment decides the frequency at which the proton is going to absorb the radiation and give a signal. Electrons which are surrounding this nuclei, they circulate when present, placed in a magnetic field. And these circulating electrons, they create a small magnetic field around the nucleus. So this magnetic field created by the electrons is called as induced magnetic field. So every nuclei will create an induced magnetic field because of the electrons which is surrounding it. Okay. Now, what is this induced magnetic field? It is a magnetic field created by the electron cloud which is surrounding the nucleus. Now, depending upon this induced magnetic field. Now, you, let's just look at this example. Like the previous one I said, the, like say, let's say A, B, C and D. So, there are four types of protons. So, you are getting four signals. Now, out of these four signals, I'll tell you this is for OH. Okay, this is for CH2. Here, this is CH3 twice. So, this is, proton, this is A and this is my CH3. This is your C signal. Okay. Fine. And you can also see the integration, how the integrations are different. This is one proton, this is two, this is three and these are six. Now, in spite of CH3 group, the two CH3 groups are appearing at different positions. Why they are appearing at different position? The reason is the electronic environment. Okay. So, how electronic environment affects the chemical shift? Two points, two words that you need to remember in NMR are shielding and de-shielding. Okay, so shielding and de-shielding causes shifts in the position of the NMR signal and this shift is called as chemical shift. What exactly that means? Now, when you have a nuclei surrounded by an electron cloud, okay, so this nuclei is shielded by the electron cloud. So, when you apply a magnetic field, the nuclei, the magnetic field felt by this nuclei is less because of the magnetic field of this electron cloud because the magnetic field is opposing the applied magnetic field. So, this is the induced magnetic field by the electron cloud which is opposing the magnetic field and this is your external magnetic field. Now, if the electrons are opposing the external magnetic field, the magnetic field will felt by the nucleus will be less. Yes or no? Magnetic field felt by the nucleus is less. Example, I will give you a simple example, a bulletproof jacket. Suppose you are wearing a, wearing a bullet, bu, uh, sorry, bu, bulletproof jacket and someone shoots at you what happens you will be saved right from that bullet bullet right why because you are having a shield you are having a jacket right so that jacket is opposing the uh, the effect felt by the bullet same thing is here the electron cloud which is attached to the nucleus is your is the bulletproof jacket the bullet is the external magnetic field you are the nucleus and the jacket is the induced magnetic field. So, it is opposing. So, if the induced magnetic field is opposing the applied magnetic field, the, this decreases the effective magnetic field felt by the proton. If the magnetic field felt by the proton is less, okay, the signal shifts to right. The signal shifts to right. So, what do you mean by right hand side? I'll just, this is the right hand side. Okay, so this is your right hand side and this is the left hand side. This is called as the upfield shift. So, my signal is because of the shielding. 
the shielding is because of the electron cloud okay hence the magnetic field felt by the nuclei will be less if magnetic field felt by the nuclei is less less energy is required or lower frequency is required to flip the electron right if the magnetic field is fe uh, felt by the nucleus is more more energy is required to flip the nuclei right so because the magnetic field felt by the nuclei is less less energy is required so the signal appears upfield so upfield signal is because of shielding of the nuclei okay now exactly opposite is d shielding now what is d shielding suppose your nuclei is uh, attached to an electronegative atom like say oxygen so what does oxygen do oxygen is an electronegative atom which pulls the electrons towards itself so this whole electron cloud is pulled by the oxygen so the nucleus which was now before uh, oxygen which was surrounded by the electron cloud now this electron cloud has shifted towards oxygen so now this is open the nucleus is open it's like you are not wearing a bulletproof jacket if you're not wearing a bulletproof jacket what will happen you will hit by a, you will get hit by a bullet right okay sorry for using this terminology will instead of bullet let's take stone so you will get hit by a stone right so impact will be more impact is more so same thing happens with the nucleus if the electron cloud is not available the magnetic field felt by the nucleus is more if the magnetic field felt by the nucleus is more more energy will be required to flip that electron if you need more energy the signal is going to appear at a higher value right so if when i say i take the tms signal as zero where is my ha, this tms signal is zero and this is scale is 14 delta scale 0 to 14 so this is the higher value no so my value is shifting on the higher side i will need more energy to flip that electron this is called as d shielding and this d shielding is associated with electronegativity if a electronegative atom is attached to the nuclei it removes the electrons from the electron cloud this decreases their density and results in less shielding which is called as d shielding Hence, electronegative atoms are said to de-shield the proton and because of the de-shielding, more magnetic field is felt by the nuclei. More magnetic field means it will require more energy to uh, flip the nuclei. So, magnet, I hope you are understanding this. So, we call this as de-shielding of the nuclei and the signal shifts downfield. So, downfield means more value okay so remember it this way d for d shielded and d for downfield so whenever an electronegative atom is attached uh, to that nuclei it will always show you higher value or it will be downfield signal when electronegative atom is not attached to the nuclei the signal will appear upfield that means at a lower value also the magnitude of the de-shielding effect decreases as the distance between the proton and the electronegative atom decreases if you look at the values over here it is for ch3 only this ch3 is showing a value of 9.93 ppm and it is far away from bromine which is an electronegative atom and when the ch3 is directly attached to bromine the signal is very downfield 2.69 so look at the difference for the same group ch3 when it is attached to a electronegative atom which is very near or when it is attached to the same electronegative atom when it is far so this is how the chemical shifts take place also the chemical shift depends upon the electronegativity of the atoms if a more electronegative atom is attached to the same group, the signal will appear more downfield. For example, fluorine, which is the most electronegative atom, right? It de-shields, it, it removes the electrons on the nuclei, okay? So, definitely the signal appears downfield. So, 
the same CH2 under normal condition when it is not attached to any electronegative atom the signal is shown somewhere around 1 1.2 but now when this CH2 attached to a very electronegative atom the signal is appeared at around 4 similarly oxygen now oxygen is less electronegative than fluorine so the signal is appeared little bit upfield compared to this see chlorine is again less electronegative than fluorine again that is appearing 3.5 so depending on how far what is the electronegativity now your CH2 is not attached to oxygen or fluorine or chlorine it is attached to carbon and this carbon is attached to oxygen so slightly far from the electronegative atom and hence the signal is still upfield so more the electronegativity of the atom or more electron withdrawing group present stronger the proton field the magnetic field and they appear less shielded and they are more exposed to the field more exposed to the field means more magnetic field felt by that nuclei more magnetic field felt by the nuclei means more energy required to flip that electron so when the signal goes to the left hand side it is d shielded or downfield when the signal goes to right hand side the we say it is shielded or it is upfield this is shielding and d shielding i hope you have understood this there are certain values that you may have to learn for NMR, which you may have to literally by heart. Okay, uh, the most important ones that we most of the time require are these three values, and depending on whether they are attached to you know electronegative atom or not, then the signal shifts to upfield or downfield. So these are those values for upfield and downfield. Apart from that, you may require to learn more values like for RSH, ROH, RNH or benzene ring protons okay these are the benzene ring protons aldehyde proton where it appears carboxylic acid proton where it appears so whichever uh, protons that I have tick marked are some of the important values that you may have to learn for interpreting NMR signals now for example there is this one molecule CH2 O CH3 and C okay now there are two types of protons present over here okay what are the two types of protons a and b so how many signals we expect two signals one for ch3 one for ch2 now the normal range of ch3 if it is primary the normal range is somewhere over here somewhere like 0.9 or something like that but now because it is attached to electronegative atom it will not be observed at one it will shift where downfield so instead of getting the signal at say one or 0.9 you are getting the signal at a higher value 3.5 okay similarly ch2 is also attached to oxygen now for a secondary proton the normal range is around 1.2 to 1.4 but now it is attached to oxygen also there is a nitrogen atom present over here so two electronegative groups are attached so you won't get the signal at around 1.2 or 1.4 it will be downfield higher value so you get a signal at a higher value at 4.2 okay also if you look at the integration this is the ratio that it shows the ch2 signal is smaller than the ch3 and this integration tells you the number of protons first you get the ratio and then depending upon the molecular formula you calculate the exact number of protons so this is called as shielding and de shielding or we can say chemical shift this is 